My name is Constable Tall, and this is my night shift. My routine, uh, I get a quick nap. I get up, get ready, prep my meal, and uh, basically uh, get my bags ready, kiss the, kiss the kids goodbye, for, and then I head out to the door. Bye, mom. Bye. Usually I try to get here at least like an hour before the beginning of my shift, and uh, so I can have a quick workout before the start of my shift at nine o'clock. Um, eight is available, so I'll take eight. And usually when I come to the detachment, um, even at the beginning of my shift, I always uh, uh, get ready uh, to respond to a call. The vehicle is ready, fully loaded. The computer is on, I'm on the board, and uh, I can start having my workout. Hold on. The workout portion, basically, I come in early and that's my personal time. For me, I think it's very important as a police officer to uh, to stay to stay fit, and uh, it's good for your mental health just to have a balance in life. Well, at any point, if a call comes in, I can interrupt what I'm doing and dress up and head out the door. Usually it takes about like an hour, and by nine o'clock, I'm usually back in the basement and uh, get ready, shower and um, you know, uh, shave if I have to that day, and uh, I'm ready uh, to start the night shift. The beginning of my shift, uh, check with Passovers, um, check with the shift that just left, which is day shift, and see if there's anything that needs to be carried on for night shift. It's Friday, rock and roll, hit the road, and uh, see what the day gives us. But yeah, I already checked my email, uh, nothing on the go. Uh, my task view also nothing on the go at this point. And uh, we're gonna do some traffic, uh, just do a little bit of speed enforcement on 59. And uh, after that, it's gonna be uh, impaired night, I guess, just uh, looking for impaired drivers for the rest of the evening. So I have these two blue cases here. So these are for um, impaired. Uh, investigation uh, if we suspected that somebody is uh, have consumed alcohol so we can use these devices uh, just to measure uh, alcohol on their breath in the system and on top of that I have my uh, HBA uh, this is just for a situation where uh, shooting is involved uh, and I have my uh, duty bag here basically this is my office on the go uh, I have all the paperwork that I need if I'm outside, I don't have to come back in the office. I can deal with a lot of situations uh, from a blood demand uh, with uh, traffic, any type of court document release, uh, yeah, um, extra paper for my printer. Now everything is digital. Uh, I have a case here with my digital camera. So basically I can spend 10 hours on the street without coming back in the office. And I have my laser. Uh, this is for speed enforcement. Uh, basically, uh, I'm gonna calibrate it before we take off here. I have a 30 meters landmark over here, so and I'm just gonna shoot it up to that uh, to that reference point on the other side. And I have 30 meters from my landmark, basically, which is right on the ground, up to my point of reference on the other side, and this is for my short target. And I'm gonna go for a long target on the other side. So that's my landmark. So I turn it to my target. So from that point, I got 45 dead on. So I can tell this uh, instrument is calibrated and I can use it for my ship tonight. So basically this GPS map system has like a virtual tracker, so it's live. Uh, dispatch can see me uh, where I'm right now, where my vehicle is moving. Can track basically as I go on, uh, on the map. So basically from here I just go completely dark. 
Uh, this is a spot basically 59 in the perimeter heading uh, southbound from each direction. So we'll be just doing laser uh, traffic en enforcement for uh, for folks coming uh, from um, Birds Hill Park, Grand Beach, Victoria Beach and all that coming back into the city. I'm completely in the dark. Uh, this is an 80 kilometer zone, so I just started. So, this was the speed, it was blocked doing 107. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna go inside and uh, give him a ticket, and we'll go to the next one. I already told my dispatcher what just happened. Uh, I already checked the vehicle, the registration is valid. The registration is valid. Uh, the owner is the one driving right now, so his license matches. Uh, he has a valid driver's license, so at this point, he's only basically. Had one offense, which is basically speeding. So everything checks out. Um, he's sober. So now, basically, our systems is equipped with uh, these computers, and we have cart reader, cart readers right now. So these are pretty helpful. Makes our work go really fast. So he was. I clocked him doing 107. And the speed limit here is an 80. So the fine frame is $403 for today. Okay. This is all done. Let's we'll serve the ticket and now uh, we'll go to the next. And the screen was off, so I had a conversation there, and he's been pretty straightforward. Uh, he's gonna get a warning today. Pretty decent kid. He was very polite, very respectful. So it kind of comes along with our job sometimes, right? If we can't actually have that that teaching moment, you know, I'd rather go with that. And sometimes, and uh, in this type of situation, so. And four, and when was that? Expires November 27th. Okay, well, on top of the warning now, he's gonna have some other driving explanation to do right now. He can't drive. So his license has been suspended for some other reason. And uh, I'm gonna go out and deal with that. And uh, if he can't find a driver, I'm gonna have to tow the vehicle. Actually, I have to tow the vehicle because it's suspended, so it's like a okay, can't be driving. So he has a bad, he has a very bad driving record right now. He got a lot of stuff on the go and his driver's license suspended. He was aware of it, but I guess he chose to drive. So, um, yes. Uh, so he's gonna get a suspension ticket and his vehicle is gonna get towed. Uh, basically that's what it is. So we're gonna be here probably for another 30 to an hour. Uh, let me call the tow truck. So by the time I write up the ticket, how can I help you? Hi, how are you doing? Oliver, sir. Good, it's Constable Tall with the RCMP calling. I'm on Highway 59 and, Mas and Masterhead. I have one vehicle to be towed for suspension. Back to your compound, please. Uh, it will be like 15 to 20 minutes, sir. 
Awesome. They, man, I like that. Awesome. Thanks, yeah, man. Thank Thanks for your help. Thank you, sir. Thank Bye, everybody. Take care. Bye. Yeah. Take care for the cell phone because the cell phone, he had another cell phone offenses. That's one of the reasons, actually, he's... Uh, so he was lucky that, actually, he was very nice with me and I cut him a break on the cell phone Well, I, without realizing, knowing that, actually, that was the cause of him losing his license. And until now, he kind of knows because of uh, running stoplights, stop signs, and cell phone driving, texting, and yeah, so it's been kind of racking all those um, offenses. Yeah, the fine for that for driving uh, basically suspended is $672, and he gets his vehicle uh, towed off the road. And um, yeah, his girlfriend is here, so he's gonna drive, she's gonna drive him home, and uh, the vehicle will be towed and uh, sent to the compound. I'm gonna go serve the tickets and uh, they can carry on. And I'll wait. Tow truck is probably gonna be here in the next like 15 to 20. And now uh, we're done. Just a loud noise complaint. Uh, people coming over with the loud music, having a party. Uh, it's 11, right? Usually, like the, the bylaw kicks in at 11 for the noise complaint, so we'll try to sleep. So yeah, so there's probably roughly about like 15, 30 kids. Uh, they're complying with COVID right now restrictions. So alcohol is involved, there is no minor. So, uh, I mean, it's summertime, they were very respectful. So I told them to keep the music down as long as they played safe and make sure that nobody drives. So actually everybody's staying here tonight. That's what they're saying. So they're all sleeping in. So all these vehicles are gonna stay here. So they're safe and uh, they will keep it low. And now uh, we can, uh, we're good to go. So I did a uh, sobriety test on him. Uh, he came from a dinner uh, with his wife. Uh, he passed, so he's right now. He's, he had alcohol in his blood system, but it wasn't enough for uh, for an arrest or anything like that. So that's why he's continuing driving, and uh, we're good to go for the next one. He came from his buddies, he says, and uh, had a few beers, but uh, yeah, he was very close borderline of passing, but he did pass, so he was under the limit. That's why he carried on driving, so no, uh, no impair for that one. He had a mix vodka like in the center console just like a coffee just with a with a glass i've never seen this before actually this is my first time usually i see like a beer can or whatever but not like a glass with it <laughs> so uh he passed he's gonna continue driving so with all the alcohol which is basically the partner who was drinking that uh that shot from that glass with that mix so he's gonna get a ticket for open liquor i'm gonna inspect these bottles they look pretty brand new to me so it looks like they were not open so for that reason i'm not gonna seize it so they can carry on with the alcohol i'm just gonna put it back where actually a hand can touch it so they're gonna end up uh, with an open liquor ticket for the night and uh we'll carry on
The driver was very nice too, very respectful. Yeah. He was very nice. Yeah. yeah. He was borderline to fail. Yeah. Was he yelling? No, he was a passenger. Like, yeah. So right now I'm trying to be very polite and very nice. She was right here, she's coming out of party. We saw her stopping in the middle of the road. Found out a little bit odd. Found there was a rabbit that was crossing the road. I had to stop completely, not kill the rabbit. <laughs> all, right, all right, fair enough for me. So yeah, right now I'm just doing neighborhood, basically a patrol. Uh, when I'm at West East St. Paul right now, so right now I'm on Eagle, uh, Eagle Creek Drive, and uh, we will be heading to West St. Paul after this. So this is basically uh, patrolling around and just looking for uh, anything suspicious. Lately, we've been getting a lot of people uh, hitting those new buildings to steal lumber, just because the price of lumber right now is uh, it's so expensive. So usually, uh, yeah, we're just gonna go drive around that area, just check those uh, new properties. During night shifts, yeah, we do a lot of driving at the vehicles in 3D duty. So for the oncoming shift, I usually make sure the vehicle is fueled and police cars are in good condition, at least clean. Up. So stop at the car wash. Uh, there's some of the gas stations that are open 24-7. Yeah, I already chugged that. <laughs> Get rid. <read. laughs> So we, we got like four tickets today, so I have to link. Thank you.